That sounds good to me. Thank you. I believe we are still, we are recording. Okay, go for it. Okay, are you, you ready for me? Stuart, are we ready? Okay, all right, let me just figure out how to share my screen. Share your screen, say hello. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Can everyone see uh, the dashboard I have here? Yes, I can see it. Excellent. Okay. So, hi everyone. I'm Vanessa Venti from Harvard. Um, I am demoing today an analytics dashboard that I created for our Spotlight Collections. Um, I created this dashboard using Data Studio, which is um, a freely available data visualization tool um, provided by Google. And I'm going to show you both the front end kind of user interface part, and then I'm going to also step into edit mode a little bit to, to show you guys how I set this up. So what we're looking at right now is an overview page for all of our, we call them collections here. So if I say collection, I think, think exhibit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so this is showing um, all the analytics for all of our exhibits combined, but every single one of our exhibits has its own dashboard page as well. So if I click on daguerreotypes, for example, <laughs> you'll see now we're just looking at the analytics for the daguerreotypes exhibit. And so Data Studio has a lot of different um, widget um, or charts, I guess actually is what they're called. And so if we're looking at this top row here, these are called um, scorecards charts where you're just, they're just showing like a, a one little snippet of data. So the sessions, the, the number of users, you know, the bounce rate for that collection. And then in the next row, I used a series of pie charts to show how users are finding the collection, where they're coming from, um, the percentage of new versus returning visitors, and the devices they're using. And so I could have easily, just as easily shown these as bar graphs or line charts, um, but I thought pie charts made the most sense for this case. <laughs> um, and then the next row, I've got a couple tables showing um, the most visited pages and the search terms. And these, as you can see, all of these widgets are interactive. If you hover over them, you get a little bit more data. Um, you can scroll through these tables and page through the next, you know, page of results. And you can also download a CSV of the full set of data for that, that chart, which is really helpful for some of these bigger um, ones that have a lot more data in them. And so then finally on the bottom row, I have um, an interactive map <coughs> that um, is a, just an, a nice, neat way to show where the users are coming from. And then I have a couple more of those scorecard um, charts at the bottom showing the total number of unique searches and sessions with search. Um, and then users can also select whatever date range that they want to see analytics for. And so there's a lot of um, really nice predefined dates they can choose from. And um, I wanted to show you guys a little Easter egg that I found um, in the daguerreotypes collection. So I preloaded this just in case we had some problems. 
Um, but looking at the last week of December, I had found that this one item in daguerreotypes was getting a ton of hits because this is not one of our most popular collections. And so then looking at the data a little further, it, it appears that someone had posted um, a link to this image on Tumblr. And so I just want to show you guys what that image is. <coughs> and that is this photo uh, daguerreotype of a cat drinking from a bowl. So it goes to show that people just love looking at photos of cats on the internet. And if you're looking to increase your analytics, maybe try putting some more cat photos in your exhibits. <laughs> I think we should do a whole exhibit of just the cat just. photos. <laughs> That's So I'm going to, um, switching over to um, a template that I made where I basically just copied um, the dashboard, a couple of the dashboard pages that I made um, as a template that for to share with you guys. Um, and I'm just going to use that to demonstrate the back end. So I'm going to go into edit mode and just show you how easy it is to, or maybe I was, here we go. Here we go. Um, so first I'm just going to add a new page and um, here's all the list of the available charts and I'm just going to place one of them on the map or on the page and you'll see it automatically will populate with some data. Um, here's the data that it's pulling in right now and if I wanted to change any of these this is where I would go and select the different metrics to use um, and then you know just to show you another oh that was the another one here's um, the scorecard um, chart again automatically pulling in some data to to get you started and then if you go over to i'm just going to select this one and go over to the style tab there's a ton of options for styling <coughs> the, the charts in different ways which i found to be really helpful because you could sort of customize it based on the data that you are seeing you know from anywhere from the number of slices you're seeing in the chart to changing the colors and the fonts and you know um, customizing the legends and so, and you know stuff like that and then the last thing i wanted to show you guys is i'm going to go to um this page here um i wanted to show you how i set up the filters and um what this is is basically i just added a filter to every one of these charts um, for this particular collection. And so if you go, um, so how I did that is if I go to manage filters, you'll see I've got a filter for every one of my collections. And then going into the edit mode, all I'm doing is I'm saying for every page that has this as the beginning of the that contains this in the URL slug, make this a filter. And then I just went and applied that filter to all of the charts on my page. And so that's all I wanted to show you guys, but I did want to- Can I ask Oh, yes, yes. Um, could you add a filter for multiple collections? You can, you so can keep on- has five and you want to see all five together. Yes, yes, I yeah, think you can keep on adding filters. Um, we could do that for certain types of exhibits that you know are behaving in certain ways yeah. yeah so i just wanted to end with um a couple overall impressions and and tips and of what i learned along the way so i found the dashboard really easy to use um i think the hard part was understanding google analytics and um and and learning how to set up at the data, you know, the, the, the data charts 
Oh, I see there's a lot going on in the chat, so I'm just gonna check and make sure I'm not missing anything um, important. Okay, all right. No, no technical problems though, it looks like. <laughs> um, okay, so I just, um, yeah, so I was just saying that uh, it's, it was the, you know, knowing Google Analytics that was really the, the learning curve, I think, um, and figuring out which ones are going to be the most helpful for your audience. And, um, and uh, you know, there was a lot of documentation out there and tutorials. So whenever I got stuck, I was able to, you know, find the information I needed and move forward. So that was really good as well. Um, the other thing, the other blockers I came across were search terms were not populating automatically. And I, so I found that I had to go in to Google Analytics and set it up to record the search terms. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind that that data is not gonna be recorded until you've configured it to do so. And then the, the other thing was I noticed the I was getting a lot of direct as my source, uh, a lot of sources that were saying coming in as direct. And I knew that likely most people, a lot of people were coming in from our library website and I wasn't seeing that coming up as a source. And so I did a little research on that and figured <laughs> out that, um, I could add what was called a UTM parameter or a tag to those URLs so that I could track Harvard Library as a source, which you can now see is now coming through over here. So that was another, you know, another thing that was, again, I, from time before I can't, you know, we, we only had that tracked since I, since I got that set up properly. Um, so, and then the last thing I would say is I wanted to find a way to be able to, instead of creating a page for every exhibit, it would have been nice to just create one page and then have an option for users to have a drop down to select the filter that I created to, for the, each exhibit to apply to the full chart. And I could not find a way to make that happen. It seems like a thing that should exist, but couldn't find that. <laughs> so Vanessa, one yeah. thing that's interesting about that is I think it depends on what goal you have. So for us, since most of the collections are um, uh, stewarded by individual curators, I'm not sure they wanna see have the option to see across the analytics across collections or but an administrator certainly would so it's interesting i think you want both options actually. yeah and that's where we have the overview page that shows everything and then you might just be looking at your own page instead so um yeah but it, but that being said creating a new page for a new exhibit is pr pretty easy to set up it you know you basically just duplicate an existing page and create a new filter and apply that filter to all of your charts and then you're done. So um, it's, it's more just long term if I wanted to change something on all of the pages I'd have to make that change on for every single exhibit. So that's, that's what I get and um, I'm happy to share this template with you guys since all of the sites, our sites are set up pretty much the same. I think this would be a, should be a, a very useful jumping off point for you guys to, you know, use it as a template or get you started for making your own <coughs> dashboard. You just have to set up your data source. Um, Vanessa, there are three questions in the chat that okay. I think maybe you haven't seen. Uh, the first one from Lynette about um, applying filters to multiple widgets. A question from me, a request for more documentation. And another question from Lynette. I wonder if you might be able to quickly address those. Okay, let's see. Um, can you 
apply a fil the filter to multiple widgets at a time. Yeah, so if I'm understanding that correctly, this, so this page has the same filter. Every one of these widgets has the same filter applied to it. So I have to go, you, um, go in and apply it you know, for the 14 different widgets on the page. Um, does that answer your question, Lynette? Yeah, so I was wondering if like you could like select the 14 widgets and then be able to apply the filter such that it does it to all of them. Uh, I don't, I, I did look at that and could not find a way to do that. But again, maybe I missed it. <laughs> so, good, good thought. Um, Vanessa, the lessons you learned are exciting and so helpful. Would you be able to add them? as a short list or a call. Yeah, I'm happy to, to, um, to add all that to the notes. Absolutely, Kathy. And then Lynette, I see, did you incorporate this into your Spotlight app? So do you mean in the administrative dashboard part? Yeah. So like um, when you're in your app, are you able to click and see these right from there? Because like all the links you're showing us right now are datastudio.google.com. Right. So I didn't know if you actually can embed them into the app itself. That was something I actually, I did want to look into that. Um, I'm not sure because, yeah, it would be really nice to be able to just embed this on a page rather than, um, yeah, link out. So, yeah, I have something, I, something to look into. All right. This is excellent, by the way. I'm, I'm very impressed with this. It, it looks like a great dashboard. Thank you. Vanessa, excellent job. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, and you bet. We would like to have your content. Uh, go ahead and include them in the meeting notes. And uh, we appreciate your offer of sharing the template. Uh, in a little bit, we may talk about the, the wiki and maybe how we can use that to help with sharing some of the information as well. Uh, but great. Um, any other questions for Mike, Vanessa? Mike, I was just wondering if we're done with questions, can Stu in the recording? Yep. Uh, Stu, I think you can end the recording. <laughs>